Have you ever been working on an edit only to come across this problem? You've got some great dialogue going on and you've just spent ages looking for that perfect music track only to then be completely bummed when you drop it into the edit because the vocal and the music when they come together simply get lost in one another and the whole message becomes completely unintelligible and the point is that you lost on your audience. Now, I have to admit, I've over-exaggerated that obviously for effect, but I'm sure that if, even if you've been editing for just a small time, you can most likely relate to this. Now, you may think, well, Alex, it's an easy fix. Just turn down the level of the music. But that's not going to help because the issue is the level of the music is now so low that it's lost all its energy and its vibrance. And of course, the music is helping to drive the emotion of the piece. So simply turning it down doesn't really solve the problem. Now, if that sounds like something you've ever struggled with in your editing journey, then stick around because in this video, I'll be showing you a little audio mixing trick that I've been using for years in my professional work that will really help you mix your music and your dialogue together for much better results. So let's jump on in. Okay, just before we start the video, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and I'm a certified DaVinci Resolve trainer and video producer. I love creating videos all about helping you to improve your video and editing skills, specifically using DaVinci Resolve. So if you like the sound of that, then please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. It would be great to have you on board. Right, with that in mind, let's talk about dialogue and music. So just before we jump into DaVinci Resolve, it's really important to understand some critical concepts when it comes to audio and audio frequency. Firstly, normal human hearing is defined as a range of 20 hertz, which is a deep bass, up to 20,000 hertz as a high treble. Number two, audio frequencies and volume are logarithmic and not linear. Thirdly, normal human speech is a subset of human hearing. Men generally range from 125 hertz up to 6,500 hertz, while women generally range from 300 hertz up to 8,000 hertz. And yes, there are some exceptions. Finally, vowels are low frequency sounds, while consonants are high frequency sounds. Vowels give a voice its character, warmth and identifiability. Consonants, however, allow us to understand what people are saying. So to make a voice sound warmer or sexier, we want to boost low frequencies. To make a voice easier to understand, we want to boost higher frequencies. Now when it comes to music, well-mixed audio will commonly be mixed full spectrum to include all the frequencies between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. So the problem is that they are both competing in this middle section and that's exactly why you've got this unintelligibility and muddiness when you have your music and your vocal competing together. So what can we do about that? Well let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and find out. Okay so here we are in DaVinci Resolve 18. I've got a nice short piece open here on the timeline in the edit page. It's just a piece about a place called Rachel's Pantry and we've got the owner Rachel talking to camera telling us all about what they do and why they do it and then some nice contextual b-roll as well. But of course there's no music here as you can see so we want to bring in some nice music that's going to support and lift and energize this piece but without overwhelming Rachel's vocal. So how do we go about doing that? Well I'm going to show you a couple of techniques. So first things first let's get some music in here and I think it's worth just having a quick listen before we do that to how this sounds at the moment. I'm Rachel Klein. I run Miss Rachel's Pantry in South Philadelphia. Uh, we're a vegan restaurant and catering company. Cool. Okay. So let's find some music that's going to support that sort of warmth and passion and positivity in her voice. So luckily for you guys, I've already selected my audio. So I've got that in an audio bin right here. So I'm just going to load that up. Now I actually went across to audio.com to find my audio. I've been using audio.com for many, many years now in my professional workflow. And I think it provides excellent value for money. They've got a fantastic website that's getting better all the time. They've just added a couple of things called link match and elements, which allows you to download various different elements of your audio and you can then remix it to your own heart's content to suit your piece which I think is really really cool. They've also got a load of new development coming this year and their website catalogue is just growing and growing with great music on there all the time and I very rarely struggle to find any uh, music that I can't use to be honest it's really really good indeed. So they've also got a fantastic deal on at the minute it's $299 for a lifetime of music subscription and sound effects subscription. So you can have both for $299 at the moment. Now, of course, this won't be around forever. So if you're watching this video la later, then of course that may not be available, but do head down into the description because I've got a link and also a discount code. So you could always get a bit of a discount on your audio subscription if you'd like to. So thank you very much. That helps support the channel, helps support audio, keep doing what they're doing. And obviously we can keep making great content like this for you. So. Here's my audio, I've selected it already. I'm just gonna give you a, a little sneak peek of what this sounds like. Cool, 
Cool, so it's got a nice little early positive tone to it and then it obviously picks up as you can see in the waveform and we've got a lot more going on later on in the track. Certainly loud enough and, and with enough going on that it could really overpower Rachel's voice. So these techniques are gonna be really crucial here. So let's bring this down onto the timeline just by dragging it down for the time being. I'm using full extent zoom, so immediately you'll see that the timeline's expanded to show me everything that's in the timeline. I don't need all of this audio, so I'm just gonna very simply drag this down for the time being and watch how the timeline just pops back there. Really cool, I quite like working like that. So there we go, job done. Music is in the timeline, right? Well, we know that that's probably not the case because it's clearly gonna be a bit loud. So let's have a listen. I'm Rachel Klein, I run Miss Rachel's Pantry in South Philadelphia. Okay, so as we can see, it's clearly already too loud. This is a quiet piece of the music and it's obviously very much too loud. It's starting to overpower her and certainly later on, it's almost impossible to hear what she's saying. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop these audio levels down and incidentally, sorry if you're listening on headphones or you had your speakers turned up loud, that might have been a bit of a shock. So I apologize about that, but it was to make a point. So we're gonna use the inspector in the top right having clicked on our clip in the timeline, and we're just gonna drop this audio volume down to what I would call a bass volume. So something that we're kind of happy with, generally speaking. So I'm gonna bring this down to about minus 15, something about there, and let's have a listen again. A lot of people, some people stock up every week. You know, I haven't had matzo ball soup in years because I'm vegan, I don't eat eggs. And so that's good. We've got a nice bass audio. I can just about hear what Rachel's saying. And we've still got some drive and energy in the piece as well, which sounds great. Now, this is where people tend to go wrong. Of course, they hear this and they go, oh, we need to keep reducing that level of the audio. Now, there's nothing necessarily wrong with it, but it just isn't going to give you the right result because let's just show you what happens when we do it. So let's drop the audio volume down on the music piece to 25. So minus 25 there dB. And let's have another listen. You know, I haven't had matzo ball soup in years because I'm vegan, I don't eat eggs. And so for me, what that sounds like is that we've got the successful result in some respects because we can now hear her more clearly and the audio's in the background, but it feels like they're two separate things. It doesn't feel like one's supporting the other. I feel like we've lost a lot of the emotional presence of the music. So just dropping the audio level isn't necessarily gonna help. Plus also this bit at the beginning is still very quiet. We're cooking here without me. It's too subtle and we're going to now start to have to think about keyframing our music and volume levels which again is a bit more work than we need to do when we've got these fantastic techniques available so let's just go back and i'll show you technique number one so back to our base level at minus 15. now these can both be done and applied in the edit page so if you don't want to leave the edit page that's absolutely fine but the advantage of davinci resolve is that we've got these fantastic extra pages in one interface so i can just simply jump over to our audio interface with fairlight here and as you can see, it's a little bit more audio focused. So what we want to now work on is this audio track and then applying a couple of these little techniques to help fix it. So here's technique number one. What we're essentially gonna do is we're gonna use a effect called vocal channel. So come across to your effects in the top right corner here, click it and come down and you're gonna see an area here for audio effects and then Fairlight effects. Let's just click Fairlight effects and then scroll down to where it says vocal channel. Now we're gonna use this, we're gonna throw it onto our clip by just dragging and dropping like so, and we'll get our vocal channel dialog box pop up. We could have also applied this to the track if you wanted to, it would have been the same sort of thing, but obviously anything then dropped into that same track would have this obviously effect applied to it. Now what we're working on here, and you'll remember from earlier on in the video, we talked about the range of human hearing and the range at which human speech appears on the audio spectrum. So we go everywhere from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz when it comes to human hearing. And then the human voice sits in and around, depending on whether you're a male or a female or maybe even a child, anywhere between the sort of 200 hertz and then say up to maybe 8,000 hertz or so. So what we want to focus on is that middle range. And you can see that this puck is actually positioned beautifully here. So we've got low frequency, mid frequency and high frequency. So what we're gonna do in this instance, we're just gonna move our mid frequency. So it's around about 1,000 hertz. I'm gonna just have it about there. And then I'm gonna just drop the gain underneath it so that we come down to around minus seven or so like that. And what you'll see that we've done there is created a little trough in the frequencies. And this of course is perfect because what we're doing is reducing those frequencies in our music track and that allows Rachel's voice to sit nicely and naturally right in the middle of that trough when the two come together. So with that turned on, let's just have a little listen to how that sounds towards the end of our edit. 
and I hear it from a lot of people. Some people stock up every week. You know, I haven't had matzo ball soup in years because I'm vegan, I don't eat eggs. And it's really nice that we can evoke that feeling in them. Our barbecue stay tan, which is tan. So there you go. I hope you can hear that that's made quite a difference. And what I'll do, just to give you a bit more example, I'm going to solo the music track and press play this again. Cool. So it's made quite an impact there, which is really great. Now that's using the effect called vocal channel. What I'm going to do is just reset that so it's not actually having any impact anymore. In fact, I'm going to come up to the inspector and I'm just going to remove it completely so that we have that all fresh and back to where we were. I'm just going to step in here a moment to make sure that everything is making sense. Please let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Also, it's a great time to remind you that I've been running a giveaway here on the channel to celebrate some recent milestones that we've had. There's still time to enter the giveaway by simply liking this video, commenting giveaway, and then also making sure that you follow me on Instagram. All of the details can be found in the description as well, and I'll be giving away some really cool stuff. We've got a Resolve Studio license to give away, a Wacom tablet, and my very own speed editor, as well as some other great stuff. The dates for the live draw will be announced very shortly, so please make sure that you're in the draw and following me so you don't miss out on any important information. Okay, housekeeping's all done. Let's carry on with the video. Now, the other way that we can achieve this same effect is to use the equalizer on our mixer. So if your mixer isn't already open, just open up the mixer and then you'll see that it appears just in the right hand side here. And if you drag it out, you should be able to see your A3 audio track and we'll be able to see this little panel here for EQ. If you double click on that, you'll get an EQ panel pop up. And now we can work with this as well. And it's a very similar principle, but I think this gives us a little bit more control. And I think it does probably give a slightly better result, although the vocal channel effect works very quickly. So if you're in a bit of a pinch, sometimes that works even better. So what we're gonna do, similar scenario, we're gonna focus on those frequencies that we're gonna most affect when it comes to the human voice. So in this case, I'm gonna use two bands to create my trough. So what I'm gonna do is select my frequency here about 400, which is roughly where a female voice will kind of start to kick in. Might even go to 350. And I'm just gonna drag this to about 1.4 or so for the time being. I'm gonna drop the Q factor all the way down to the left as far as it will go. So it's 0.3 there. And the Q factor just affects the width at which we're affecting this particular frequency. So if I show you, if I just drag that down on the gain and I change the Q factor, you'll notice that a high Q factor makes it a very sharp frequency, really isolating more of a single frequency, whereas the Q factor being very low affects a wider level of frequencies. So what we're gonna do is just drop that down to about minus seven like we did before. And then similarly, we're gonna drop this one down to about the same, might just nudge it in a little bit more. And again, you can see we've created the same effect. We've got this nice little vocal trough or channel that hopefully our talent's voice is gonna sit nicely inside. So let's just have a listen to how that all sounds. And of course it helps if I unsolo the music. Eggs, and it's really nice that we can evoke that feeling in them. Our barbecue stay tan, which is tangy and sweet and a little bit spicy, has a lot of protein, a really great texture. There you go. So again, I hope you can see how quick and simple that really was to just reduce some of those interfering frequencies in the music track to allow a channel that Rachel's voice can sit in quite neatly. And I hope you agree again, especially if you're listening with headphones or you've got good speakers, that the level and the intensity of the music is still there and we've not lost the passion and the, and the sort of the emotion of it by just simply lowering the level of the audio. So that's really quite neat indeed. And you can take this a little bit further still by creating a preset so that this is very easily applied every single time you want to use it again. So to do that, all you have to do is come across here to where you've got the little plus button and it will hover over it long enough. It will tell you it's able to add you a preset here. So simply add preset. Would we like to create a new preset for the equalizer? Yes, we would. And we're just gonna give it a name like so. And of course, the good thing about this is it should generally be in about the same position every single time because obviously human voice is pretty much in the same place every single time. So very easy one to create a preset for. I'm going to press OK and you'll see now that we've got the EQ vocal channel there as well. So if we wanted to, we could just pretend that we've reset this, come back and then another time you've come in to the same particular piece or another piece that you're working on. Similar scenario, you want this EQ channel. We're going to double click on the EQ we're going to then select the EQ vocal channel and we are good to go. Perfect.
Also, what I just want to really show you, if I'm just going to reset that EQ really quickly, that we also have the ability here to do the same with a preset in terms of the vocal channel effect that we added earlier. So I'm going to come to effects. I'm going to throw the vocal channel back on and I'm just going to quickly make an adjustment here. So just thereabouts that, drag this down. And then at this point, we've got our nice vocal channel ready to go to add a preset, similar scenario. Click this little plus button, come across here. I'm going to add FX vocal channel. So I've now got this one saved as a preset as well. When it comes to these presets, if I press this little ellipsis, I can actually manage the presets by coming to the preset manager. And you can see that I've got the FX vocal channel preset that I've just created there. I could import, export, also delete that if I want to. It's a little bit different when it comes to the equalizer. When it comes to the equalizer, you've actually got to come up to the Fairlight menu in the top here, come down to presets library, and then within presets library, filter by the equalizer presets, and you'll see that that's where the created preset that I made earlier is, and I could easily apply it to another track, or I could delete it altogether. There we go, so as I just put that back to normal, hopefully you'll find that if I just make sure I've added um, an effect, in fact, I'll let me take away the vocal channel one, because I think the result is slightly better when we use the EQ. I'm gonna add in my preset like that, and again, just play that back for you to give you an idea of how that sounds. And it's really nice that we can evoke that feeling in them. Our barbecue seitan, which is tangy and sweet and a little bit spicy, has a lot of protein, a really great texture, um, and we serve it with mashed potatoes. And it's soup and years because I'm vegan, I don't eat eggs. And it's really nice that we can evoke that feeling in them. Our barbecue seitan, which is tangy and sweet and a little so there we go. I think you get a really great result when you do this. And of course, if you wanted to, we could always now adjust some of the levels a little bit further still and put a little bit of keyframe work in just to lift some of the audio level at the beginning. Vegan of the piece. means no animal products. So we're cooking here without meat, fish, poultry, dairy, eggs, honey, anything that comes from. But I think you'll find that this is a much better result than just lowering the audio by itself. So there you have it. Now you know how to mix your audio, specifically your dialogue and your music, so that they can play better with each other and ensure that the emotion, but also the message you're trying to communicate doesn't get lost or have trouble competing against itself. So did you know that already? Or is this new information to you? Have you maybe been doing this already and using one of these particular methods that I've mentioned? Was it EQ, vocal channel, or maybe even stereo width? Perhaps there's even another tip that I've not included. And if that's the case, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, before you go and watch the next one, please be sure to hit the like button for me and let others know that this was a good video. Additionally, well over 85% of you aren't actually subscribed to the channel, so this is a perfect opportunity to join the gang and subscribe. I would certainly be very grateful. There are also other ways that you can support the channel on the screen, and it will really help me to continue bringing these free tips and tricks to you that I've learned over years of editing and also using DaVinci Resolve. I hope it was helpful and I'll throw a few more videos onto the screen now for you to take a look at next. But until next time, happy editing. Bye for now.